I realized uh, this morning, after all this time, believe it or not, that I think my microphone has been too low, I'm kind of straining to reach it. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am using algebra. They told me I'd never use it. It was worthless. Ha! Huh? Joke's on them. Because I've now employed another book here underneath my microphone to prop it up. It's by three gentlemen. I'm assuming they're gentlemen. I'm sorry about that. Um, Miller, O'Neill, and Hyde. Miller, O'Neill, and Hyde. Um, I used to hide from algebra when I was in school. Um, sister, who was it that was my algebra teacher? Sister Marlena. Oh, M.G. She was a terror. She ruled with uh, not an iron club, but with a green yardstick. I don't know which is worse, an iron club or a green yardstick. At least an iron club it would all be over with. But the green yardstick was kind of a torture treatment until Terry Williams. God bless Terry Williams. I remember him to this day because he was the one upon whose ass the fabled, infamous green yardstick finally broke, and he became legendary. It finally cracked on him, broke in two, and uh, we never saw it again. I don't know. Sister Marlena became uh, inexorably discouraged, gave up on it, but God bless Terry Williams. This is um, beginner algebra that I'm using now this morning. So, hey everybody, this is Martin Zender. Welcome again to Broward College and Secrets in Daniel. We're in Part 26, if you can believe that. It's a run-up to Revelation. Now, let me ask you something. Is this okay if we do a like one day, little one-day sidetrack? It might be two days, probably only one. I got an email this morning that I really want to share with you. Um, it was it's by it's sent by someone named Alice, and um, her handle is really great. I, I really I'm not sure who this is. And ta uh, tapioca toes. Now, when you get an email titled tapioca toes, you're intrigued. At least I am. I've never gotten one that says tapioca toes. Listen to this. She starts the email to me by uh, giving me a quote. And here's the quote. Just right in. Not, hi, Martin, dear Martin. Just bang. Uh, I love your shades. No, it just starts right in with a quote. Here's the quote. Listen to this. An amazing quote. I've never read the likes of this. Quote, he will one day call atheists too, because his love is the selfless kind that does not rest until it seeks and saves the last lost sheep. The blood of Christ's cross is the most effective prescription for all enmity, either on earth or in heaven. And these words, when I read them this morning, what better way to start today? And then I looked, and this was a quote from Martin Zender. <laughs> it's from me. I'm reading my own words, unaware that I'm the author of them. And she's putting my words back on me, and I'm going, this, this is good. Who wrote this? All right. I've told you before that when I get down in the dumps, I will, my own words bless me. This only proves to you how humble I am. It really does. Because I, when I'm down in the dumps, I look at this person who's saying these truths writing these things. And I go, who is that guy? This is fantastic. So I learned from them myself. I'm in the position of a, of a learner. It's God working in me. Okay, but this is, listen to the rest of this email. And she got this from an article. And I'm going to share this article with you because honestly, I forgot all about it. But this is fantastic. This is Alice. I can't thank you enough for your article, Atheists in the Rain. Reading that article made me cry as my daughters are atheists. I was going to write you to ask about some things you taught on a video, but I'm just putting that on hold for now until I watch it again. I really appreciate Aaron uploading all those teachings to YouTube, which is how I got your email address in the first place. At this point, I pause, and I too would like to thank Aaron Locker in Winber, Pennsylvania, the great metropolis of Winber, Pennsylvania, who faithfully puts our videos up on YouTube, the ones from the conferences. He takes care to make sure the quality is good, the sound is good. Thankful for him. Thankful for him as well as you, Alice. I appreciate Aaron, Aaron uploading all those teachings. Then she says, excuse the rambling, it's 4.30 in the morning. I understand completely. You are a crazy man. You know this, Alice here. You're a crazy man. You know this, right? 
I thought you needed yet another person to tell you in case you forgot. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and I know exactly what you mean by it. I know that you don't mean I'm literally crazy. I don't think so. But um, what you mean is, I think, is that I let it all hang out. And you know exactly what I'm thinking. And um, I appreciate that. I take it as a, a compliment. I need to quote it just one more time. And here it is. He will one day call atheists too because his love is the selfless kind that does not rest until it seeks and saves the last lost sheep. Alice finishes, so I cry, but there's a goodness in it. All the best. Thank you, Alice, and all the best to you too, because I know that there are people watching me and listening now who have loved ones who don't believe in God, or they once believed and they fell away because of the hypocrisies, the hate, the divisions, in the organized religion, and you know that organized religion drives more people from God than any other power in the world. And so many of you are suffering this way, but God indeed does save atheists too. In fact, the shock to me is not that God saves atheists, but that he saves Christians, that he saves the religious people who conspire unwittingly together to drive God from the minds of people because he's a hypocritical God. He's a God of hate. He's a God who waits to pounce upon people, waits for them to make one mistake. And now I want to read my article, Atheists in the Rain. This is published only at present on my website. If you go to martincenter.com, you go to articles, and it's there in the articles. This was based, I wrote this article, I'll probably get half of this article today because I want to comment on it because, again, judging by the reaction of Alice to this article, I'm thinking, okay, this is going to help a lot more people because there's a lot more people out there who have family members, friends who are not only unbelievers in the gospel of Paul or the circumcision for that matter, but atheists. What is God going to do with atheists? I'm going to tell you. Atheists in the rain. This was based on a church sign I saw one day, and here's what the church sign said. I'll never forget this. It was in Greenwich, Ohio at the United Methodist Church. And it said, atheists have no invisible means of support. Atheists have no invisible means of support. Ha ha, always a play on words from these churches. Always a cute little saying that the pastors got out of the church sign magazine, whatever it is, church sign monthly, where they steal their sermons, where they steal their church signs idea, their church sign ideas. No invisible means of support. You know, a play on the phrase, no visible means of support. Well, the poor atheists, they have no support from any invisible means, which of course means God. So by extension, I'm reading this. I'm reading this from this stupid quote that atheists are, can, are not supported by God. God has somehow left them. He is, because they don't love him, he is codependent. He turns his back on them because he has to be loved. Unless you love God, he can't love you in return because he has no, he has no self-esteem. He has no value of his own. He has no son in him to support him. He needs you to love him. And if you don't love him, he has to discard you from his life so that he can find other people who will love him because his love depends on your love, you see, which is all the opposite of the truth is that we love God because he first loved us. And when did he first love us? Read Romans 5.8. While we were still sinners, while we were yet in accord with this era, God sent his only son to us. He loved us at the worst possible time, the most improbable time, the most outrageous time. That is while we were still sinners, still in accord with the era. I'm quoting from Memory Romans 5. Could do a whole series on Romans chapter 5. And I know you're afraid that I'm going to. Oh my God, Martin's going to start a series on Romans chapter 5. He's basing this on a departure from Daniel. All right, no, but we're going to talk about it in broad terms because again, I feel like I'm a, nine, I'm a 911. I'm an emergency technician. When people are hurting, I'm the guy that goes in there. I'm just like, get me to the cr scene of the crime. I'm going to take no prisoners. I'm going to rush, and I'm going to help. And that's what we're going to do here today and tomorrow as my time winds down. Now I'm going to read from my article, Atheists in the Rain. 
See how audacious I am? I'm reading from my article. Isn't that, isn't that ultimately humble? Thank you, it is. I didn't like it. I didn't like this church sign. I knew it was wrong. No invisible means of support. Then what powers the atheists? Their own strength? The devil? I would not give either the atheist or the devil that kind of credit. In other words, folks, if God is not supporting the atheists, then we have to have some other means of support because these people are obviously standing on their two feet. Their heart is miraculously beating. Their lungs are miraculously <laughs> taking in air and exhaling air. They're loving their children. They have love in them. Where did that come from? If they have no invisible means of support, that is God, then this love that they have for their children, for their family, even for themselves, must come from some other source. And I am guessing in this article where it could possibly have come from. From themselves? Ooh, that's scary. Gee, if love and life can come from within the human, then why don't we just produce life in a test tube? Why don't we produce love in a test tube? Or does love come from outside of ourselves? Love doesn't come from the atheist. doesn't come from God because they have no invisible means of support. What about Satan? Most Christians would say that atheists are of the devil. But gee whiz, that goes against this sign too because Satan is just as invisible as God. Therefore, Satan can't be the culprit here. And of course, that would be, that would be something that the writers of this church sign would say, well, no, it is Satan. Well, you just said no invisible means of support. You're not being consistent. Ah, my friends, consistency is not exactly a hallmark of the Christian faith. Thank you for joining me on this sidetrack. I'm not finished with it. I'm just getting started with it. Tomorrow, we're going to continue on what I think is a worthy rabbit trail. That's a rabbit. And um, we're going to bring comfort to those who have the very real burden to bear of loved ones or family members or both. Some people, family members are loved ones, ironically enough. We're going to bring you comfort and peace, not from the teary-eyed hopes of emotional grandmothers, but from the Word of God.